Hello, my name is Stephen Carr and I'd like to welcome you to another SketchUp cooking class. In this class we're going to discuss making a fly around or an AVI file or an animation. Uh, there's a couple of things that are very important when looking at animations. Um, one thing is that when we set up our different scenes we must remember the rule of thirds. So we would try to make sure that the screen is basically divided into thirds so the horizon would be on a third the focus point should be somewhere in this area here 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 or here also another aspect is that we're trying to tell a story so we need to try to set it up so that it is a story so that we can you know try to present it so the first thing um, we want to look at when we're creating an animation is that we create what we call scenes. So if we go into our view animation we can add a scene. Again that's view animation add a scene. And you're familiar with these little tabs on the top. We probably went through tutorials using these. So this little tab basically means that this is the first scene. If I go away from here by clicking back to here it brings me back to this scene. So it's 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 a position that's remembered or recorded and we can work with it. So uh, one thing that's really kind of useful to work with is if we work with our styles. So if we clicked on Windows and we clicked on Styles then we would get this uh, flyout box here and by clicking on different styles we have these is what we call the default styles and we can do color sets we can do assorted styles uh, photo modeling sketchy edges so let's just stick on sketchy edges just to have a look at this so by clicking on different sketchy edges you can see that it kind of creates more like a hand-drawn effect So you got to be careful that you don't get things that are too, too heavy. Everybody sort of has their own idea. So I'm just going to select this style here to start with. And now in order to get this to be recognized, I need to right click and I need to update. And so now this is what my scene looks like. So if I want to do another style and I just right click on scene one and I add a style now again going back to my scene manager I can go into in model and we have this one is our basically our present one um, we can actually play with this a little bit by turn this is in rendered mode so I can change it to shaded so this is just like color. So what we've done is we're trying to go through steps. The first step was sketchy. The second step is color. So I need to update this. And uh, update scene. Save as a new style. Update scene. Okay, we don't want to forget our style. So if we go back to here now, again, it's, it's our sketchy one. So this is our concept. And here we're developing it a little bit far, further and we can add another scene and then from this scene we can again go in well in this case we don't have to do the defaults we can actually just click on the render button and now we can add this save as a new scene create so the story's going along nicely now um, I'm going to orbit a little bit just like I'm kind of walking down the sidewalk and again I need to make sure that I keep the focus in the right area the focus is obviously the house so now I can just add a scene now if I'm adding the scene the position I'm in is where I will be so again I can just orbit around a little bit pan well, that tree is kind of blocking so it's kind of I probably should go a little bit more and now again I can 
add a scene and I can go to the back so I'm going to have to back off a little bit because I got the gazebo here so this is kind of a you know a little have a look at this we can add a scene go over to the other side So we just try to work our way around. So one thing we wouldn't want to do is, um, I don't think we would want to go back and forth. So once we start our movement, we should, and I'm just gonna try like I'm coming into the house. Okay, so once we've done this, we can go back here and I should be able to right click onto this and play. So now you'll see it's going through each little step. And this is just giving us an approximate idea of what it's going to do. So of course it's going to take a little bit of time here. We'll discuss that in a second. And then we're actually going around. And once it gets to the last scene, then it just flies right back to the first scene again. So I can just stop this. So the last scene, because we've sort of come here, we don't, we, we're don't. we probably going to want to just do a bit of a delay. So I'm just going to add another scene, and it's going to be the same. You notice in the first scene that nothing really changes except for we're changing the style. Same for the third. So the actual animation doesn't really start until we get into the fourth scene. So if we click on to our uh, Windows and Model Info, we'll get this Model Info thing in here. And if we click on Animation, we'll see that we have uh, our scene transitions. So the transition basically is set at going at two seconds between each scene so when it travels from scene three to four it actually takes two seconds when it gets there it stops for a second and then it goes on to the next this is fine but it means you go stop go stop so that gets to be a little bit boring maybe so what I like to do is I like to set this to zero and maybe just set this to two and a half Okay, so that means it's going to be continuous. Now, when we play the, the uh, animation here, it's not going to really show up correctly. Uh, the problem is that it's going to... Um, has to animate in full time, so it doesn't really work too well. So, another thing that's important to us is, uh, once we've done this is we're going to export this or actually what we've done is we've created a we have a scene manager and you can see that each one of these scenes is set up in here we can take these and we can reorganize them this takes a little bit of time to get sorted out so um, if you want to add or delete stuff you can play with it that over there um, the thing that's probably important now is if we go into file and export an animation. When we get into exporting an animation, what's really, really important for us here is that the uh, animation has a couple of options that we can work with. We, when we export it, it becomes an AVI file. If you're working on a Mac, it becomes an MOV file. This is a bit of a problem uh, in that when it's an MOV file, um, when we're doing PowerPoint, it's a little bit harder to get it to play properly. So look at options. So this is giving me my screen width, my height, frames per uh, second, 
and it's giving me my screen size. So this is pretty good. Um, if we wanted to do it to for just to te test it out, I'd probably drop this to 600 by 400. But if we do that, then we get a very grainy looking image. So I like to keep it up a little bit higher. Uh, you can check on my notes and you'll see for that. And so we click, click on OK and then the animation is completed. So I'm not going to go any further with this here. We've gone over this in class, so you should be okay. Thank you.